And on that note, I want to make a request. These people are political animals. They have the bit between their teeth on this thing, and I don't think they're going to let this go. We never did. We always were the way we are. And now we just have a forum where we can find each other. And I think there's room for us to do that. Easily. So I don't think if this is something that you agree with me about, if you do, that they're conflating these things, that it's going to cause problems that we can do without. That's not even elaborated on, and I don't get that. I, I don't... What? Um... Then what I would ask is that you don't just leave a comment and say, yeah, I agree with you, Jim. Do whatever you can. If you make videos, make a video. I don't want to make this video. Okay. I don't know who that guy is. First time I've ever seen him before was yesterday. Because um, Wise Apple was responding to him. Uh, er, let's see. He started out the video that she refers to using a slur for female genitals. Now, I realize that's a real popular word these days, uh, especially among British-influenced people, but then so are rape jokes. Uh, he said the word, and then he said, oh, you're not supposed to use that, something to do with feminism, but you can say, I think it was dick. Uh, well, no, not really, and he's misrepresenting both atheism plus and feminism, uh, and he says he doesn't know, and so he's coming from a place of ignorance, but he's got all these opinions. So the reason you don't use that word, of course, is because women's bodies have con been considered filthy and stupid and ugly and repulsive for a very, very long time, and it permeates the culture, and it's toxic, and it even teaches men bad things about themselves, that who they're having relationships with or who they're attracted to is ugly and disgusting um, and stupid and inferior. But also, uh, most of us, if we weren't birthed through that body part, we were probably inseminated through that body part. And what does that say about the origin of our own lives? There's far more important things than wondering about a little political entity that has now manifested itself within some portion of the atheist community. Yeah, I know I've said there's no community, but I'm using the word for convenience. I use, uh, and I got this from you actually. Um, I'm kind of using the word atheist atmosphere now <coughs> because I agree there's no community. Um, it's just some sort of element in the air. I, I hope that doesn't sound too new agey. Uh, uh, that uh, has impact and influence on the decisions we make in life and the directions we go, uh, some of us. Uh, so I'm just using the word atmosphere. Now, I've had a look into this Atheism Plus. I've read a couple of blogs. I've read, read Christina's and Richard Carrier. Now, to be honest, I don't know who Richard Carrier is. Okay, I didn't know who he was either. And he doesn't speak for me. He uses a lot of inflammatory language, and he's uh, very good at dismissing people as subhuman. But that's not a way to have a conversation, to just immediately point your finger at somebody else and go, you bass. So I'm not real thrilled with this guy, and neither are a lot of other people. In conversations on Reddit and Facebook and so on, people are saying, well, he doesn't represent me, and he's kind of appropriating things. Part of the problem is that people of privilege are talking too much and there he is a person of privilege and he's talking too much and I'm like Gah! Um, and that's probably born out of my own ignorance and I'll take that one on the chin but the way he's put it is that if you don't accept this atheism plus you're an arsehole and I think that was actually the words he used the way I would rephrase that argument is that if you uh, think it's okay to use oppressive language and oppressive ideas in order to make some sort of a point as an atheist, then you're an asshole. It's not about accepting atheism plus. It's more about accepting some of the principles and ethics and morals of atheism plus. I think that's what Carrier means. I can't speak for him. That's what I mean. I think Carrier is way over the top. I think he's a self-righteous jerk and 
I've looked at the actual values that are proposed for it, and uh, ouch! Look, I've got no quibble of any substance with any of those. Um, absolutely, sexism and transphobia and all those sorts of things are things that should be addressed. And if we're talking about addressing them within atheism, that is something that needs to be done at an individual le level. I, I don't want to see the word inextricably linked to a political agenda. I can't speak for anybody else. For me, it's not about a political agenda. It's about social activism and uh, about healing hurt. I know that there are Marxists who identify with uh, atheism plus. I know that there are Democrats that do. I know that there's some rumblings about anarchism and libertarianism within atheism plus. I hear what you're saying and I don't want that to happen either. I don't want there to be a political agenda. I just want there to be a more open conversation where people are evaluating things and critiquing things in an attempt to improve things. As noble as that agenda may be, I don't think it's the time when, what, atheists are at best somewhere around 14 or 15 percent of the US population, um, which is where social policies and uh, social norms often originate these days. We shouldn't be splitting off a section of atheists into Wait, our look. little group or our little club. There's already a division in atheism because of some of the more rabid elements who say I have a right to freedom of speech and that includes my right to be hurtful and hateful toward you. I think Atheism Plus is more a response to that already created division where people are being alienated from atheism because of some of the language that's being used and the abuse that's being uh, hurled on people uh, unfairly the mob actions of going to people's videos or blogs and leaving really hateful, excuse me, really hateful, cruel, threatening, abusive, harassing comments. <coughs> so there's already a division where people were feeling very alienated and this is an attempt to correct that. Don't have it as a, atheism as a qualification for addressing broader social ills. I see Atheism Plus as a call to action to local communities. This is already starting to happen. Local organizing um, to have an influence on social activism at the local level. And I think it's an encouragement to be out as an atheist. Uh, the Richard Dawkins Foundation for Reason has a t-shirt of Atheist Plus, a red t-shirt with a white logo, logo, right? Atheist Plus. Been selling it for a long time apparently. And the funds go to a charity. I'll try to link it below. Uh, it was never an issue. Nobody felt bad about it or thought it was an evil thing. Lots of atheists have been involved at the local level in secularist, humanist, social action groups. Uh, I think that this is an attempt to uh, make that an overt thing rather than, like you're saying, on an individual basis. Form a network and support group so that folks don't have to reinvent the wheel, so that they have encouragement and um, a place to go for resources on how to move forward uh, and to begin analyzing the language that we use. And I would probably venture to say that most of them these days are probably not racists. But they are homophobic. When you work in um, communities that have been highly influenced by some real fundamentalist stuff, you're going to find some real homophobic and transphobic stuff. Uh, again, having a, pre a actual physical presence and influence within groups who are doing that kind of work as an atheist and a social progressive uh, might have a positive influence on this stuff. To be able to have an impact on the community that's fighting racism as a person who's an out atheist who is also having a conversation about ethical behavior and the language that we use 
this might have a proactive impact on anti-racism work. Why the hell would you want to put a divide between yourself just because you don't have a belief in a god or gods and someone who does, who has just as valid an opinion and has resources to fight against that particular social ill? We want to work with the people who already have the resources. We're not wanting to reinvent the wheel. We're wanting to plug into existing organizations. And it's not that we want to create a divide. There already is a divide. Like I said, the prejudices and stereotypes about what atheism is. Uh, and this is a way to form a support network so that we have a place to go back to to say, okay, I'm getting this resistance or this friction from this group because I'm an atheist. Help. Talking about atheism plus as something that's internally policing and um, something that we regulate ourselves as, we're not a coherent group. Internal policing meaning individual policing, I can relate to. I internal policing as in I'm going to tell you how to think, act and feel, not so much. There's a whole language and jargon now of social justice that's relatively new to me. Yes, there are people in there who are already starting to police language. And that worries me because people have to have room to grow and to come to their own conclusions. Those people who are doing that are coming from an old context outside of atheism that says this is how you should think, act, and feel and speak. Not so much on board with that. And I think, again, Carrier's an example of that. If you're not like me, you're bad. I'm not going to go there. You know, a lot of people who are working class and so on, a lot of people who are atheist YouTubers as opposed to atheist bloggers and stuff, uh, or foundation owners, uh, we come from a different perspective and we're down here in the streets where people use language like that and don't have big academic backgrounds and how to think, speak, act, feel. Oh, we're coming from the seat of our pants. If a person like that wants to try to interface with Atheism Plus and somebody in Atheism Plus is saying, you're bad because you said that, that's really alienating. Golly, give a person a chance to learn stuff. So not so much enjoying that. And verbalizing about that a lot on Reddit and er, the forum that Jen started and even on the Facebook group that I started. I'm not going to be condemning of other people for being in the place where they are and starting to interface and investigate what this might mean. Don't turn atheism into a fucking church. Don't turn atheism into something that has an, a political agenda the moment you identify with it. Atheism is a statement that I don't have a belief in a god or gods. And we're taking that out into the community. I just made a video to Bionic Dance. You can find it on my channel about the need for secularist and atheist influence in, among poor people. People here are frightened because of the domination of religion on the culture and the whole set of values about shame and unworthiness. There's a lot of us who need courage and reinforcement and somebody to have our back. Don't politicize atheism. Don't make it a little clique. What are you actually trying to achieve? Don't want to make it a click. They're silencing language, for instance. I especially see this among YouTubers. Um, using the R word. I made a video also about ableist language in atheism. It's on my channel about using the R word uh, for developmentally disabled people and how that stigmatizes them. And it's hurled at Christians to say, you're stupid and you don't understand. And uh, you know, there's other language you can use that doesn't stigmatize people with de developmental disabilities. Brain damaged. You know, I have brain injuries. I don't want to be stereotyped. Do you know, I have any idea how much, you know, you don't, how much prejudice and superstition and stereotypes people have about me because I have brain injuries. The assumptions they make that I'm going to be violent or out of control or irrational or unpredictable, untrustworthy. It just reinforces that. There are other, there's other language you can use that doesn't make people with disabilities lives harder.
how much prejudice and superstition and stereotypes people have about me because I have brain injuries. The assumptions they make that I'm going to be violent or out of control or irrational or unpredictable, untrustworthy. It just reinforces that. There are other, there's other language you can use that doesn't make people with disabilities lives harder. I don't know where this is being driven from. Um, I'll give it credence as a fresh idea. It's being driven from the rape and death threats and the sexist, racist, homophobic, transphobic language and behaviors that we're seeing within the atheism atmosphere that are alienating, that uh, hurt people, that cause a great deal of damage and silence people. But in my opinion, I don't actually see what can be achieved by a subset of a subset. It's not a subset of a subset. We're not putting up walls and barricades. And we're, what we're trying to do is to, instead of enclose ourselves, we're trying to broaden the conversation. And it's already happening. Even the guy you're quoting, this plum dude, brought up the fact that that epithet he used that starts with a T for female genitals is inappropriate. He's already thinking about it. He went ahead and used it and made a joke about it. But it's making people start to think and discuss. That's not a bad thing. If people are becoming conscious, that is not a bad thing. It's more like ripples out instead of walls around.